out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad, and there are a number of videos already on YouTube showing the more optimal or better way to shoot a really heavy bow, but what I'm going to be doing in this video specifically is show you how I shoot it in a way that many people have claimed is wrong, okay? And if you've been watching my archery journey here on Shadow Vessel, you'll be all up to date on that. Uh, to just cover it briefly, it's the fact that there are heaps, and I mean heaps of medieval artworks showing the medieval longbow being shot with the arrow on this side of the bow, so this would be the inside of the bow versus the outside of the bow, or if you're a you know right-handed shooter, I mean you draw it with your right hand, it would be the left side of the bow or the right side of the bow. With such a plethora of evidence showing the medieval longbow being shot that way, I've endeavoured to try and figure out are there any benefits to doing that way, and indeed I have. It's not to say it's the best way, there are definite pros and cons, and it depends what the individual archer finds more beneficial or what they prefer. And for myself, I've actually discovered I prefer shooting this way. I can shoot faster and I can draw a heavier bow easier, which we're going to get into a little bit in this video, because what's, what I've also found really interesting is when shooting this way, I have naturally adopted a drawing method, a way to draw this big heavy bow that uh, is similar to other methods or styles that you see around, you know, different parts and styles of archery. And uh, I've only seen done occasionally, not very often, but occasionally with heavy medieval war bows. And a second method that I only realize that I'm doing very regularly from editing this very video. And I discover this in my speed shooting test with my 100 pound bow later on in the video. So do stick around to find out what my secondary method is. And I'm going to show you how I do it, okay? And it's not to say that you should do it, even if you're shooting on this, this side like me. Say this is, I'm not saying this is the best way, but it's the best way I've found, and it really works for me. And uh, what I found really interesting is, as I've been looking through medieval art, usually um, the arrow is on here or it's in full draw position in the artwork. Rarely have I ever seen uh, artwork depicting half drawing, okay, which actually gives a bit of an indication of the drawing styles. Now, when in full draw, we see stances, and what's really interesting about the artwork in this case is that oftentimes, not in every instance, and this is an interesting point, oftentimes the artwork shows a stance that we see being already adopted in a medieval reenactment for people who shoot heavy bows. And it's a stance where you kind of step your foot forward and you're leaning forward and arcing your back back like this to engage the back muscles. And one of the reasons why I think this um, stance is also adopted is because uh, if you're, it encourages the bow to lean in that direction because you're leaning forward. That's just natural biomechanics. When you're leaning forward, if you have the arrow on the outside of the bow, well, it's probably gonna fall off. But the conventional way has the arrow on the inside. And with that method, now I can, it's harder for me to draw the bow this way, but I can actually draw um, this heavy war bow. And in case you're wondering, I've made it a meme on my channel. So I'm not, I'm only gonna say it once, but there's a whole video where I have weighed this bow to prove it is 100 pounds at my draw level. That's all I will say on that. So when I say this is a legitimate heavy war bow, it is. Now, it's harder for me to draw this way when I'm leaning in and have the arrow on this side, but I absolutely can do it. You fully engage your back, you're leaning forward, and I can maintain that pretty well with the bow leaning in that direction because it encourages leaning it in that direction. But even though leaning forward like this encourages you to place the arrow on the inside of the bow because of the angle of the bow, that's not to say you can't angle the bow slightly in the other direction and have the arrow on the other side as well. I've tried this out, it can be done, and this is depicted in medieval artwork, the arrow on the outside of the bow with this forward lean. Before we get too far into the video, I'm interjecting to say this is not studded leather. Some people have legitimately been confused. Some are trolling, but some have assumed that this is studded leather. No metal underneath here. This is a full brigandine, historically accurate, based on the Chalkus Type 2 brigandine. And this is the first time I'm actually shooting in it, because I only recently received it, because in Medivant we see a lot of archers wearing the good old brigandine. Full video review. If it's not out already, it will be soon. And, uh, and I wanted to test what it's like shooting in this, because this is a particularly great model, because freedom of movement, all right? Like, like check that out. Uh, other brigandine models that were like straight and didn't have the movement required. So this is actually a really, really get great reproduction. It's from Steel Mastery, if you're wondering. So shout out to them. And uh, more details in the actual 
video on brigandine. Getting into the specific techniques, and I will show you the technique that I use with the arrow on this side, because when I show you how I do it, I'll show you uh, some interesting references in medieval artwork that actually match the style I'm doing. But first of all, the conventional uh, techniques that this isn't me saying it, these are other experienced uh, war bow archers who have shared the different techniques that help with drawing a bow. Because it, with a light bow, it doesn't matter too much. There's not much strain, so you can just do a low, you keep your arm low and just draw it and it's not much of a problem. Uh, that's a problem when you get into <laughs> the heavy war bow range, right? Because if you're uh, keeping your hand low in the drawer, you're engaging the wrong muscles, okay? But when you keep your arm high and draw kind of across the face like this, that enables you to engage your back muscles pretty well. What you want to try and do with your back arm, instead of pulling down, yeah. you're going to pull up. So your elbow should be in a nice straight line to the corner of your mouth. By keeping the arm, you know, above and straight, you can draw a big bow like that really effectively. But there is another thing that people have said about trying to use both arms. The, the draw that I just did was basically all this hand, sorry, all this shoulder and all that arm, and you can do it. Um, and I tend to disagree people saying that uh, it's dangerous. I will say it puts more strain, okay, on that arm. My opinion on different archery techniques, okay? If you're making work and you're clearly showing that you're being safe, you're not, you know, causing injury or anything like that, shooter's preference. That's a, a term that actually can come up in, in firearms, okay? You know, you could be shooting it with your feet. If you're hitting the target, go to town, that's your style. And so, again, there is an idea of trying to use both arms in the draw. When you draw, yeah. push with your front arm yeah. as much as you pull with your back arm because then you'll use both your, your chest and your back at the same time. Okay. If you set your arm up and then pull, your right arm's doing all the work. Right, okay. So you're gonna try and push and pull at the same okay. time. And when I've heard people try and encourage that, I haven't heard people explain how, except of course Armin. There's a great YouTube channel, Armin, he does archery, and he's showing one method of drawing, and that's instead of keeping the bow in line, keep it out like that, and when you draw it, you pull the bow in, okay? You're kind of using both back muscles. And so if I keep it out here, I'll have it off the string so it's not gonna draw, uh, accidentally fire. And I draw it in, yeah, it works. Now, I was naturally adopting my own method, which is handing the bow that way to make sure the arrow stays on. And uh, from the very get-go, when I started experimenting with medieval uh, medieval longbows, I've noticed canning the bow that way, it, it helps me, you know, like, it's easier to draw the bow. And uh, people have been claiming that that's a greater risk of injury, which is bull crap. And the other thing that I've noticed is uh, other archers do it. Yeah, other archers incline the bow this way. And uh, a very prominent uh, war bow archer that uh, uh, people often reference is Joe Gibbs and I was watching some of his videos to see what technique he does he uses with the medieval longbow and one of the main ones you see is uh, the lean forward back kind of cant and you see that in Todd's video then I've also seen him do uh, where it's mainly just with this arm okay so he's done that one that's fine this is Joe Gibbs doing it and then I watched the video where he was drawing a 200 pound bow so 200 is the pinnacle of uh, war bow weight uh, and uh, and so I watched him draw it and look at which way the bow is being canted when he's doing the 200 pound bow. That's a reverse cant. And what's interesting, he has the arrow on the conventional side even while doing it. And he's such a, you know, a master at this that he knows how to do it to keep the arrow on that side even with the reverse cant that it doesn't fall off. If a master archer like that is doing it that way with such a heavy bow, perhaps canting that way might help out drawing weights that are so heavy, other archers certainly do it, and with really heavy bows as well, and it's particularly beneficial when the arrow is on the outside of the bow with such a cant, because now it's leaning into it, less chance of falling off. So drawing with both arms, you absolutely can do it that way. I find it a bit more awkward myself. When uh, shooting with this bow, I uh, had a low one and I would draw it up. You actually see this in one of my first videos where I try this. It's uh, I keep it low and I'm pulling up ways like that, which is still mostly this arm. There's very little extra tension that I'm doing with that. And so that is still mostly a one, <laughs> one handed, one arm shoulder area draw. But as I've been shooting, uh, building up more conditioning so I can do it more regularly and reliably, I've been noticing that I started doing something. 
And then I started doing more. And this was all subconscious. I wasn't told to do it this way. I just started naturally falling into this drawing method because my body was adopting the easier way to do it. I did not invent this. You actually see this in Japanese archery. But what's also really interesting with Japanese archery, what side is the arrow on? It's on the outside. And starting high. Starting high and then pulling down, leaning down. And so this is two-handed draw, basically. Okay, I'm pulling down with this arm, pulling out with that arm. And it is so much easier so, to draw a heavy bow like this. Bang, just like that. Just right down into it and you're good to go. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Joe Gibbs is actually drawing his 200 pound bow in a similar fashion. I'm not saying this is the only way you can draw a really heavy medieval bow. I'm just saying that I found this method makes drawing a heavy bow easier. That's what I started doing. And it's the best, best method that I found with my own experimentation. And then as I was perusing uh, artwork, medieval artwork in my casual study, look what I found. Check out that piece of artwork right there. They're doing that exact same draw, okay? Um, it's, so this artwork depicts the arrows mid draw, and we can tell by the length that is still extending past. So it's not full draw, okay? This is halfway through the draw, and they are drawing high, exactly the way that I found as well. And so their position is about like right there. Mid one, ready to go down to the full. So, oh yeah, that blew me away. I was like, yeah go because look at which side the arrow was on in that artwork. Medieval people knew what they were doing, okay? And what I find phenomenal about this, and other researchers might have pointed this out, I've never come across it though, is that for me at least it's expanding my understanding of medieval archery. Drawing the bow from holding your arms in an elevated position is not just a Japanese style, we have direct evidence that this was also done in the medieval period with longbows. So to claim the most optimal method for shooting a medieval longbow is to lean forward is false. There are multiple very efficient and effective methods to shoot a medieval longbow and we have evidence for it. The next thing that I find interesting about this method, it is harder to do, it's not impossible, but it's harder to do when you're leaning forward. Now, when you're doing the method of drawing a heavy bow, doing the whole leaning forward back thing like that, it's more awkward to raise my arms high like this because I'm leaning forward. So to get the right elevation and positioning is just more awkward. And I can still raise it, I can still draw it like this, leaning forward with my arms high, but putting it higher, the natural, uh, more comfortable position is standing upright to do it. Now, standing upright puts you back in a different position and you can definitely shoot the conventional way by standing more upright, but the conventional wisdom when you're shooting a very heavy bow uh, is to do the kind of lean forward method, arc your back and do it that way. And that's again because I think it encourages the bow to lean the opposite direction, help it rest there, still engage the back in a more efficient manner. But when you have the arrow on the outside of the bow, okay, your natural inclination is to lean it the opposite way. And drawing the bow with it leaning that way while leaning forward feels very awkward. <laughs> it's natural, it's much, you feel much more uh, it feels much more natural and you can feel your back engaging more efficiently when it's leaning this way while you're leaning forward the opposite way. But when you're standing upright, the opposite is true. And in fact, to even go further, to lean your back a bit back like that, which again, we not only see in the artwork that I showed, we see in a lot of other artworks. And what I also find interesting is the arrow is on this side when it tends to be when they're upright, not in every instance, okay? But it's certainly an intriguing correlation. And so while standing upright, um, I can lean the bow a bit that way, not too far, just a bit, okay? Raise high, my arms can naturally go high for this one, and then I can pull it down into the drawer and fire. Now, I'm only, you know, still, I've only just gotten to the point where I can shoot this regularly without too much strain. And it's only been focusing on drawing at the moment. I still have a long way to go with accuracy. I've got decently accurate, oh, Completely different arrows, by the way, as well. I got pretty accurate with my 70 pound bow. And then when I moved up to 100 pound, threw off my sight picture completely. And then when I started shooting war arrows, which are heavier, thicker, <laughs> like they're naturally veering much further off to the left. This might seem like an odd interjection, but it's actually quite important because the purpose of this video is to talk about the uh, techniques I've naturally adopted in shooting a heavy longbow. And while editing this video, 
I actually saw another technique that I was doing when I was shooting uh, the longbow for a, a different goal, okay? You see, when I was, uh, when I've been talking about raising the longbow high and pulling it down, that takes less effort for me to do, and so when I'm trying to take my time and line up my shot, and I might be holding it for a bit longer, uh, the less amount of effort I need to expend to reach full draw is very beneficial, and so that's the method that I use when I'm taking my time. But when I'm trying to shoot as fast as I can, takes too much time to raise the bow and draw it down every single one. And so at the end of the video, just for a bit of fun, I decided to do a speed test because I'm getting really consistent with my war bow. I just wanted to see how fast I'd be able to shoot with it now. And I show it with you. And then when I'm editing through, I realize there is a consistent technique I'm doing while I'm speed shooting. I'll show you now, but even though there's a bit more of a discussion on speed shooting just towards the end of this video because it's fun. But if you had asked me on the day the method in which I was shooting, I would have explained to you, well, I'm just drawing the uh, the bow with one arm. Just, just like that, okay? Basically, a one arm pull with very little movement because that's what I thought I was doing. But it turns out that no, when your body is trying to do something that has a measure of resistance to it, it can actually start to naturally adopt methods or movements that are more efficient without you even realizing. That's exactly what happened here. You see, because when I'm shooting uh, this war bow, trying to be as fast as I can, I'm actually, instead of holding my body to the side, I'm actually standing with the chest forward and I put the arrow on the string and then when I draw it, I curve out like that. This is actually similar to that technique Armin was describing that I saw in one of his videos where instead of holding the bow front on, you hold it on the side and you pull it out like that using both arms in the drawer, but it's actually in reverse. Instead of starting with the bow off the side, you start with it on front, but you start with your chest rotated facing forward and you rotate the chest away as you draw. And so the arm is actually going on a motion, a movement like that. You are literally pulling the bow, okay, drawing the bow with both arms. And so I checked Armin's channel to see if he's talked about that. And indeed he has. Because even when you stumble upon things yourself, chances are people have already done it before, especially if it works. And this draw method Armin calls the rotational draw. And this is actually a great example how your body can, not always, but it can fall into the most naturally efficient means to try and overcome resistance. And so just to show you right here, and this is what I'm doing in my speech, and you'll see like just regularly, I, I'm doing it constantly, is my chest is instead of off to the side, it's facing more forward. And as I grab the arrow, put it on, I rotate away as I draw, just like that. And so it's using both arms in the drawer and rotating. So it makes sense that Armin calls this ro the rotational drawer. And this is just another technique or method that you can use to draw a really heavy bow. I'm not leaning forward when I do this. I'm not leaning back. Heck, I don't even need to cant it too much. I like to cant it, you know, reverse just because I find it more natural and easier, but you don't need to do it. And this is really efficiently using both arms in the drawer. And look, like I'll lean, I'll lean back and you can do it, not a problem at all. So, like I saw this and I was like, I'm not doing a static, that's not, like, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So this is the other method that my body has naturally adopted because it's more efficient and easier. You've got the, you know, pulling down one that we see in Japanese archery, and now there's this rotational one that I do when I'm speed shooting because it's faster. Which one is easier? Honestly, comparing the two, oh, that one is so much easier. So pulling down like that is by far the easier method, even more so than the rotational one, but the rotational one is so much easier than just a static, you know, going down and pulling back because like, it uses both arms, but whew, it's, a, it's a bit of a significant difference. Yet when I'm speed shooting, because it's faster, that's the one I have naturally started doing without even realizing because I don't need to raise it, I just sit straight there. It was clearly easier than the alternative method that I was doing right when I first started and I'm able to maintain it for a good consistency, a full 12 hours without exhausting it and I can do another set after that, not a problem. So these are the methods that I found are particularly effective in drawing a heavy war bow as well as the conventional methods that people use when shooting in the conventional way. So now we'll go to the footage I filmed yesterday where I end off this video with a fun little speed shooting test.
Now this is the first time I'm actually showing in video me shooting my heavy bow uh, on my YouTube channel because I've been training, all right? So it's not like I've been doing nothing. Uh, I've been getting into a point where I can shoot it more regularly because I'm at a point now that I don't need to warm up with my 70 pound bow. I can go into shooting this one. And so what I want to do, just a slight speed. I've not practiced speed shooting, okay? And so I don't think I'm gonna nearly match what I was able to do with my 70 pound bow, but that's the goal. And I think I'll be able to surpass it as well. Um, and there, I need like another serving on, uh, on this thing. And so we're just gonna see how many arrows I can shoot with my big one, okay? So now what's, get, what's interesting here, because I'm focusing on speed, a method is probably gonna change. I noticed that I don't, if I'm just focusing on speed, I don't raise it. Now, puts more strain. The other thing, I'm also short drawing. I'm only gonna be drawing to about my mouth, which is perfectly standard when it comes to speed shooting, okay? Now, if I wanted to measure my shot, I was gonna hold it for a bit longer. Uh, the higher draw, okay, as I, when I pull down into it, is the better one because it's easier to do. It's the one I adopt more naturally and I can focus on aiming better. So, aiming here, not focusing on, this is speed, and then I'll focus on aiming and put it all together, but anyway. Yeah, no raising, just a faster draw. And we're getting that thumb down. Didn't draw that one further as far back. So I've stopped the timer at 30 seconds because I like even breaks. I have 12 arrows that I shoot in total, but that was well before the end of a minute and I like to try and find out how much I can shoot within a minute and then the next category down 30 seconds. And that was eight arrows in 30 seconds with a 100 pound war bow, which is interestingly enough, equivalent to my speed on my 70 pound bow, which was 16 arrows in a minute. That's actually a pretty good speed for a war bow. And I wanna stress, this is without a huge amount of practice. You will have noticed the thing that is causing me to pause the most is knocking. I actually have to look down and align the knock with the string every time. And so with practice, I'm actually gonna get a decent amount faster than this. And I credit this speed with the short amount of practice I've had to the fact I am shooting on the right or outside of the bow. So people use this video by Kevin Hicks to try and challenge the notion that there are biomechanical advantages to shooting on the outside or right side of the bow. Because in this video, Kevin tests the amount of arrows he can shoot within a minute and he is shooting on the conventional inside or left side of the bow. And I actually love this video. I think Kevin is a champion and I absolutely agree with him that if any speed record is attempted with a long bow, it should be from a quiver at the hip and in my mind, if you want to do war bow, it should be a minimum of 70 pounds. But I think going fully to the 100 pound mark is more legitimately in the war bow category. But I think it's absolutely fair to have a record for each category. Perhaps one to the 70 to 80 range, and then the 100 pound range, and then 120 pound range, and upwards. Kevin doesn't mention what poundage his bow is, but he does clearly state that it should be of a decent weight. So I'm going to assume it's a minimum of 70 pound, but it could actually be 100. It's unfortunate that people are misrepresenting this video video and my own personal speed rating that I've been able to manage, which at the moment is 16 arrows in a minute. Because there are two important things that people miss. One, they say Kevin shoots 18 arrows in a minute, when that's actually incorrect. I've counted it directly, it's 17 arrows in a minute. Someone calls out it was 18, but moments after that, Kevin says it's 17, and I counted, that's correct. How many did I shoot? 18. 18. Really? 17. There is another very significant thing, and that's Kevin actually starts the counter with the arrow fully drawn, and counts that first shot. Well, I will shout loose on the word loose, you time. Loose! And I don't think that's how it should be done. Nor is it how I do it. I start my timer when my hand reaches for the first arrow, not when the arrow is already fully drawn on the bow. So it's essentially starting with a freebie by timing at the very same time he looses his first arrow, which I could do as well, and that would give me a bonus arrow as well, putting my record to 17. Yet critics have legitimately been saying that I can only shoot 16 arrows in a minute on the right side of the bow, while Kevin here can shoot 18 arrows in a minute on the left side. 
side. Very disingenuous representation of both our records. And timing Kevin, beginning from the point when it's actually reaching the quiver, it's 16 arrows in a minute, which is the same as my own record. The difference is I've had far less practice at speed shooting, and as I mentioned, I guarantee you I'm going to be getting faster. There are absolutely, undeniably biomechanical advantages for speed when shooting on the outside of the boat. It's one of the claims that speed shooting is not a useful thing for medieval archery, heavy, like war bow medieval archery, um, is because you'll tire too quickly. You're drawing a much heavier bow. My counter is like, no, you just continue shooting yourself to the point where it's easier. Now, I don't know how many arrows I shot. Let me count. 12 arrows, okay? 12 arrows in fast succession without needing a breather. I I'm puffed, don't get me wrong right now. But to say that you won't be able to maintain a fast clip with a war bow, completely false. Now, the other point that I'll raise is that I've never claimed that speed shooting is going to be universally preferable. I don't know, there are times when you would slow down and aim a shot more cautiously, absolutely. My point has always been there are times when you would want to lay out as many arrows as possible. Like if a horse is charging you and you don't have too much distance. Battle of Agincourt, okay? Toby Capwell has said that he believes that uh, at the Battle of Agincourt, they weren't shooting in volleys, they were shooting directly straight on to get the most power as possible. And if that was the case, that means there would have been less range to move with, less time to that of window uh, to get those arrows out. So I think speed would have been drastically important then. And what about skirmishes, okay? That is a side to battle, I'll probably do a larger, more in-depth video on this, that people seem to overlook, where you lay in wait, put a trap up, and you have archers ready. And in that case, laying out as many arrows as fast as possible, very important. And this technique, okay, even though you can get fast on the other one, there are less barriers or things that you need to work through to become faster on this. And I actually think that max fast speed that you'll be able to obtain with shooting on the outside of the bow will always be higher because of the biomechanical advantages. The other thing I'll mention is that people who are saying speed shooting is not a viable thing to consider with war bows was the argument that because they're heavier bows, they take much longer to draw, so you're never gonna get too fast with them anyway. Are you seeing how quickly I was drawing them just before? No, with conditioning and when you build up to it, you can actually draw it pretty fast. Like, I won't say as fast as bow you find particularly lighter, but I will say that if you condition to be able to draw a heavy bow as easy as another person who draws a lighter one, and they find it to the same level of difficulty, you're gonna draw the heavier bow just as fast as they can. Okay, that's my point. So, there we go. How to shoot medieval war bow the wrong way, which is not really the wrong way. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed, and of course, hope to see you again. So until then, take care.